There are numerous places coming out now with leaks about story stuff and with, with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and they're talking about, you know, specific elements and things like that. Look, that's going to happen. You know, I, I've seen a lot of people complain about it and come to me and what's my thoughts on it. I don't like it, but you also have the option to stay away from it like I do. Like, I've not, you all have noticed I've not been on X very much. I have not been on social media very much at all, even to drop my own stuff, right? Um, I've got like an Aurora account to where I can go drop Aurora things if I want to that have nothing to do with Final Fantasy VII. I don't get anything in that feed from that. So it, that's that's by design, right? So if I want to stay away from that, I'll go to another account. I'll stay away from spoilers and stuff. We're good. But my main account that everybody follows me on there, I've not been... I've not been active because I just don't want to see spoilers. I don't want to link. I don't want anything like that. Anytime there's a big tentpole release like this coming out, that's what you have to keep in mind. Now, why am I talking about that, right? Because I've not been spoiled on anything. So if I talk about things, I'm looking forward to seeing them in the game and they're not there. It's not because I'm a dummy. It's because I'm literally not tapped into that stuff. So if, if I talk about something I'm excited to see, a possibility of something I'm excited to see, and it's not there. It's like, well, the spoilers were out there, right? Well, yeah, I'm not looking at them. So <laughs> I had somebody tell me that in a recent video. They're like, oh, it's already confirmed. That's not happening. I'm like, shut up. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Let me find out what I was ignorant about. Let me find out about it the right way. The right way. Not, not getting spoiled. With that, I want to say, one of the things I'm really looking forward to in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, aside from the mechanics and the gameplay and all that kind of stuff, I am really excited to see how different the story plays out. What order we find things in, what order we go through things in. Like, for instance, I don't think we're going to have to find the, the harp to go into the Forgotten Forest to get to the Forgotten Capital to find Aerith. I think it's probably going to be a situation where we just kind of get there. That's one example, right? I am curious to see how story elements play out differently. Because it looks like Gungaga is like a bigger deal. A much bigger deal in this game. And it makes sense because now we know there's something going on with Zack. Whether or not he's just in the live stream. And this is not a feelings video on that. This I've already covered that. You all know what that is. So I'm just going to say whether he's in the live stream. Whether he's alive. Whether, whether whatever's going on. Zack is a prominent part of the story. More so than he was in the original. But Zack is just there to buff Cloud. It's Cloud's story. Don't get it twisted. It's Cloud's story. He Zack is there to lift up Cloud. That's it. But Gungaga is where Zack's from. So it makes sense that that might be a bigger, more prominent part of the story. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with that. And for my money, if Genesis were going to pop up in the story, that could be a place where he pops up as Gungaga because of his tie to Zack. And that place is tied to Zack. Now, is he going to pop up in this game? I don't know. It's out there. People know, but I, I don't know. You all know I've predicted what I thought would be a cool role for Genesis, just my thoughts on it, and kind of where I thought they could go with that. Whether they do that or not, I don't know. I, I think Genesis has a lot of potential if written right. Crisis Core was not a well-written story. It, it just wasn't. But they introduced a lot of core elements that I thought could be crucial and could be very well done had they went a different direction with things. And, you know, the remake saga is a great way to course correct some of that stuff. And Genesis being a prime example of this. Obviously, Gold Saucer is going to be a big part of the story. How they rearrange things. There was a shot of the party in the, the buggy going through the desert and Elena jumping on the hood of the buggy. So that was not present in the original game, but it could have happened in the original game. It's, it's one of those things to where you can tell they're adding things, but not dramatically changing things. They're, at, they're fleshing things out. They're giving more meat to chew on, basically. More sandwich to chew on. Less bread, more meat, right? I think that's what they're doing, and I'm, I'm excited for that. The Elena thing on the buggy, there are a few other things like the way they showed Sung interact, interacting, saying Sung, whatever you want to say. It's, it's, it's whatever. Like interacting with that like puzzle in the Temple of the Ancients. 
I thought that was like seeing little things like that or the, some of the stuff that's got me hyped and very curious about what they're doing with story changes. The Temple of the Ancients is going to be crazy. I think there's going to be a lot more story added to that area. I think of all the places in the game where you could add a lot more story and a lot more kind of oomph to fleshing out the world, maybe seeing what happened to the Ancients, what better place than the Temple of the Ancients? Maybe you see visions of what happened between them and Genova. Maybe you see visions of some like specific characters that were a part of the Cetra. And, you know, because they showed us that little bit uh, in the Shinra archives. But I want to see more. I want to see more. And I'm excited to see what they do with that. That's one place. I think Coral, I think North Coral, I think that has a ton of potential for added story elements and added flavor. Put a little more spice in the bowl. And it really looks like June On is going to be a place where they really focus a lot. So... Some of the areas we've seen them focus on. In game two, we're getting, I think, seven or eight main areas to focus on. I, I know we're getting Calm, Junon, Costa del Sol, uh, Gongaga, Nibelheim, Cosmo Canyon, uh, Temple of the Ancients. Uh, th there's a few, right? And I think each one of those locations are going to be packed. Packed with story information it's going to be a huge game and we're only a couple of days away from it and i think the time for speculation and theory crafting obviously is over because like i said there's spoilers out there protect your neck <laughs> stay above the spoilers right uh and let's just look forward to this thing like i said in the previous video i'll be live streaming this thing the midnight release i'm excited about it i think it's going to be just an amazing amazing time and I am I am all on board like the the time for hype is over it is time to get wild right so anyway post your comments below let me know what story elements in the game you're most looking forward to outside of what the most predictable things might be like Aerith's fate different things like that the, the main points you know what I mean I'm interested to see what kind of conversation Sephiroth has with Aerith I'm interested to see what kind of conversation Sephiroth has with different characters in the game. Mainly, he focuses on talking to Cloud. But now that he's kind of loose and out in the wild, it might be Cloud, Aerith. He might talk to Tifa. He might, you know, talk to, show up to Rufus. I mean, we don't know. So, and Hojo, right? So, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, we know he has an interaction with Zack from that last trailer. But, anyway, I'll leave it at that. You'll have a great day. Be safe. Be good to each other. Keep rocking. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care.